I'm up on top of my coach. It's time to install the UHF VHF antenna up at the front and I've decided I'm gonna use a mag mount base. So my question is how do you get a mag mount to stick to a fiberglass roof? And how do you get it to ground? This time on K6 UDA radio. All right guys, so today's the day I'm installing my UHF VHF antenna and I decided it's gonna be a mag mount base with an NMO mount. I've got a couple of issues that go along with this. Number one is I gotta get this mag mount to stick to a fiberglass roof. Second of all, it's gotta have a ground plane. But what are the advantages of doing it this way. Well, number one, this coach, I am up here over 12 feet tall in a full-size uh, diesel pusher motorhome. So I've got very little clearance up here when I go under bridges or some trees. And so if, if I get, if the antenna gets uh, hit by a bridge, or something that wants to win, it'll knock this thing over and I can just get back up on top of the bus here and prop it back up and be on my way. Using the NMO mount, it's real easy for me once I get parked somewhere to unscrew the cheap little uh, $10 antenna that I'm gonna travel with that's as short as I could possibly get and replace it with a nice uh, a nice dual band antenna that'll get out a little bit further. I'm taking my bus over to uh, affordable RV up here in Newcastle. My friends up there are going to help me out because I've got to drill holes in my roof and that scares the living shit out of me. Oh my God, right through my coach. Oof. Brutal. To keep this installation looking absolutely factory, uh, the plan is here to run the coax right down the A pillar and through this tiny little hole here, right down to the floor under the driver's seat. The hole we punched uh, through the roof comes down Got inside it. the uh, audio visual cabinet and I pulled 17 feet of coax right through, uh, through this hole here. Now my original plan was to use uh, the wife's uh, baking tin as a ground plane but uh, these guys supplied a nice piece of sheet metal for me for zero cost and it was uh, easier and cheaper to do it that way. We pulled the coax back through the, the back of that cabinet and it comes out right next to the uh, A pillar. And then it's just a matter of fishing the thing down through uh, all the dash work and all the maze of wires until you get the thing uh, uh, through there. A word of caution when you're replacing the trim uh, back on that A pillar. Uh, on an older coach like mine, these plastics get a little bit brittle and if you bend them at all, they're gonna crack and you're not gonna be happy. Now moving back up to the roof, uh, we put die core in the holes on the, uh, on the sheet metal and uh, glued that down to the fiberglass roof. Now I picked this location mainly because I wasn't sure how much uh, uh, coax I had to, uh, to work with and I wanted to make sure it went all the way down to the uh, floor. It's like it was made for it. The other reason was so I could throw a ladder up against the side of the uh, coach 
and quickly change out that antenna. Now, the uh, this little cover over the coax here, this thing, I'd have never thought of this, and this is ingenious because that is going to seal up the hole in your roof uh, like nobody's business. After you've got everything screwed in real tight, use plenty of self-leveling die core to uh, keep all the moisture out from underneath. So after I got the coach back home, I uh, did a real light uh, base of spray paint there uh, so I could keep a good ground plane and uh, protect it from, uh, from rusting in the elements. I think it should be okay. Okay, so I'm back down here and uh, you know, the original plan here was to use my wife's baking tin as a ground plane and bolt that up. But uh, this was gonna need a little bit more work. I was gonna have to cut out some sides here uh, to let the water drain out. And the guys up at uh, Affordable RV hooked me up with a free piece of, uh, of um, uh, sheet metal. Hey, it turned out really nice. But you can use something like this if you've got it uh, if you've got it laying around or you could probably pick one of these things up at Walmart for what 99 cents next time we're gonna tackle uh, some electrical and I'm gonna get power into the cab up by the driver's area for this uh, for this ID 5100 you want to see where it goes under the driver's seat here is a little box. And inside this box and most of your uh, diesel pushers have something pretty similar to this. And in here we've got all, uh, all the electronics. The plan here is to tap off of something in here. I don't even know where these things go. But I'll find out. And the idea is, is to punch a hole up in here somewhere. We'll fish something through real quick. Either here or up here. This is the floor. There's uh, inside the coach yeah. under the floor uh, where I'm sitting. All right, guys. That's it for this time. Uh, next time. We're doing electrical. If you like this video, hey, give me the thumbs up, please. And uh, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, do it now and check out my Patreon page. Oh yeah, want a cool t-shirt like this? I got those too. Anyway guys, uh, that's it for me this time. I'm out of here. I'm Bob, K6UDA. Seven three.